What is up, Ludi Bros Army? It's your boy, Big Bro Lamar Ludi, coming to you guys with the game of the night, in my opinion, between the Los Angeles Clippers and the Phoenix Suns. Uh, I'm going to be coming to you guys quarter by quarter. I've been doing this a lot lately. I kind of like how it's been coming out. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump right into this video. If you haven't had a chance to already, please hit that subscribe button. But let's get into this first quarter action between the Suns and the Clippers. Uh, for what I've noticed from this game, it's been it's high scoring, it's exciting, it's back and forth, and it definitely has that playoff atmosphere. But let's go ahead and check up on some stats from the Phoenix Suns. Cameron Payne, who I mentioned in a previous video, I'm liking him coming off the bench for Phoenix. Well, he's come in tonight and he's already filling it up. He's got 11 points. He's had a couple deep threes. He's playing ultra aggressive, and in this all this in just six minutes. Um, we're getting the normal contributions as the whole team is chipping in. You've got DeAndre Ayton with four points and three rebounds. Devin Booker's got nine points. Chris Paul, three points, three assists with one rebound as he's controlling the action. But the story has really been Cameron Payne off the bench for the Phoenix Suns. And uh, for the Clippers, Paul George is doing his thing. He scored the last 12 points going into the end of the quarter for the Los Angeles Clippers. He's doing all this with Kawhi Leonard being out. So you know that they're going to run their offense through Paul George. And I got to give it to him. He's really been stepping up these last, uh, I want to say, eight or so games. He's been stepping up the, the scoring, and he's really been coming out and putting pressure on opposing teams. But this game definitely has the feel of a playoff game. And potentially, the potential is there for these two teams to match up in either the second round or the Western Conference Finals. If you look here, the Phoenix Suns are shooting a very high percentage, shooting 7 for 10 from three-point land. Uh, at but 70%. With the Clippers actually trying to match them, they're five for seven uh, with 71%. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be a high scoring game here. I'm happy, excited to tune into this game. This is the game of the night. We've got the Clippers and the Suns at the end of the first quarter, 39 to 31. I'm expecting a high scoring game and we will see where this takes us all the way through to the end. All right, I'll check back in with you guys at the half. All right, so at the half, the Phoenix Suns are up by 10 on the Los Angeles Clippers. The Phoenix Suns bench in this game has just really come out to play. Uh, we saw Frank Kaminsky there. He's got 13 points. He had a little 7-0 seven, seven run by himself going into the half. He hit a 3 and had a couple nice drives to the basket. The bench is coming in, and just like I said, Cameron Payne's got 11 points, uh, 2 rebounds and 4 assists in 12 minutes. Kaminsky's got 13 points in 12 minutes. Awesome to see these bench players coming in and giving some support. Devin Booker's got 12. Uh, Chris Paul, he's, he's got a quiet scoring night with only three points and two boards, but he's got seven assists to really orchestrate that offense for the Phoenix Suns. They're just really playing inspired basketball on the offensive end with everybody getting contributions. And on the defensive end, they're locked in and they're rotating very well. Now, all that being said, the Clippers are hanging around. They're only down by 10 points here. I expect them to tighten things up a little bit and go on a run here in the second half. They're just trying to stick, stick around. They're down by 10. They didn't let the Phoenix Suns get too far ahead of them. And they're going to just go ahead. I'm, I'm bet you anything they're going to come out in this second half, lock in defensively, and put some scoring together behind Paul George. Marcus Morris Sr. has chipped in 12 points. They're not getting much points from anywhere else. And I think that's going to be an issue for them um, in the second half. To I expect their defense to be locked in, but are they going to have enough scoring punch to go ahead and tighten up, tighten up this game with the Phoenix Suns? Suns still shooting very good. They're at 50% from three. Uh, they've come down a little bit from that 70% that we saw in the first quarter. And the Clippers are shooting 47% uh, from the three. It's it's a good, good solid, high scoring. Still has a feel of a very high scoring game. You can see that the ball is moving here very well. 17 assists to 16 assists. Rebounds 20 to 19. Close battle. It's all looking like it's going to come down to a close battle with this game having some heavy, heavy, heavy playoff implications. The winner of this game is going to lock up their playoff spot. So we see here when we look at the standings for the Western Conference, the Jazz are still sitting in that number one seed. They're on a little two-game winning streak. Suns are right behind them. They're only one game behind them with the Clippers then two games behind the Jazz. So this tonight's matchup definitely has those playoff implications that we talked about. If all things were to stay as they are, the Suns and Clippers could potentially meet in that second round, being the two and the three seeds. So this would be a very nice series to watch. The Clippers so far this season are 2-0 and against the Suns, with tonight being the final matchup. I believe in the regular season for these two teams, the Clippers could potentially win out 
uh, three games to zero. And I don't know if the regular season is going to have any implication in the playoffs. In my opinion, it would. If these two teams were to match up in the second round, I do think that the Clippers would be the favorite because tonight they don't have Kawhi Leonard. And even still, they're only down 10 on the road. They're hanging around. They can try in the second half to put something together and go ahead and get this win. So this has been a great game to sit down and watch. Like I said, this was definitely the game of the night, the one that I was looking forward to. Phoenix doing what they're supposed to do. They're at home. They're up by 10. They're going to have to come out in the second half and continue playing with this same type of energy. Hopefully they're going to get the same bench production. If you're a Phoenix Suns fan, you're hoping that they're going to continue with this balanced uh, production that they're getting from their bench. Or maybe they'll be able to get some uh, more support from their supposed MVP and Chris Paul to go ahead and push them up. As for the Clippers, you're expecting them to lock in defensively. You know Paul George is going to come out and remain aggressive. Is anybody else going to step up to help him out on this Clippers roster? All right, well, I will be back after the third quarter. So after three quarters of action, the Clippers went ahead. They got it a little bit closer here in the third quarter. They're down 86-80. to uh, They outscored the Phoenix Suns 27-23 to in that third quarter. The bench production picked up a little bit. Zubox has 12 points now. Reggie Jackson's chipped in 10 points. So now we're seeing the Clippers. They're moving the ball well, still pretty well, but they're still doing this behind Paul George. He's got 21 and 10, so he already has a double-double tonight leading the way for the Clippers. Nicholas Batum, his box score is very, very small. Three points, no boards, one assist. But having him on the court, in the first quarter, he was able to guard. He was matched up with Chris Paul. Here in the second quarter, we saw him matched up with Devin Booker. You're able to take him and his length, and you can put him on the other team's best player, which allows Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, when he gets back, opportunities to rest. And that's critical for this Clippers team, and it's going to be critical going into the playoffs when they start uh, getting deep into their potential playoff run. When we look over at the Phoenix Suns, the story for them in the third quarter was Chris Paul. He came alive. He had 10 points in the quarter. He's starting to try and take over the game. But still, it's that balanced approach, that balanced attack. Everybody chipping in. Torrey Craig's had a lot of hustle plays this game, and he's come in and really provided a, a punch for the Suns. Let's check out the box stats for the teams. Uh, the Suns, three-point percentage slowly creeping back down, whereas the Clippers are staying at a nice, you know, relatively stable uh, stable three-point percentage. They're shooting 11 for 24 for 45% from the field, almost 46%. They're probably the best three-point shooting team in the NBA stat-wise. Um, the assists, still very close, 21 for the Clippers to 20 for the Suns. The steals favoring the Suns right now, that's interesting. Like I said, though, in the first quarter, they've been locked in defensively and playing with a sense of urgency, but the Clippers have been able to match it and close the gap. They were down by 10 at the half. Now they're only down by six. They've hung around. Now the question is going to be this. Can Paul George carry them through in the fourth quarter and get them this win? Remember, whoever wins this game is locking up their playoff spot. So I'll go ahead and I'll check back in with you guys at the end of regulation. All right, guys, and we have it here. The Phoenix Suns were able to defeat the Los Angeles Clippers. They've locked up their spot going into the playoffs. This is great for Phoenix Suns and the Phoenix Suns franchise. This It's been about 10 years since they were last in the playoffs, so now we're seeing them getting back in. The story for tonight in this fourth quarter, second half, Chris Paul came alive. He only had three points in the first half. He finished the game with 28 points and 10 assists. Double-double. He led the way for Phoenix Suns and played the way that an MVP caliber player should play. He got out there. Every time that the Clippers went on a little run, they were able to get within four points uh, on a couple of occasions, and the Suns had an answer, and Chris Paul had a hand in that answer. So he's able to lead the Phoenix Suns to a victory. Like I asked, were the Clippers going to have enough firepower? Well, they got lots of help. You can see here in the box score, Zubak finished with 14-7. and seven. Terrence Mann had 12 points and six rebounds. He was very aggressive. Marcus Morris Sr., he had 16 points, and Reggie Jackson contributed 10. But to, fit, to have that push to get over the edge, the Clippers just didn't have it. And there, you could see that they were really missing Kawhi Leonard. So they'll be happy to get him back. The season series between these two, game, these two teams, two wins for the Clippers, one win for the Phoenix Suns. Is that going to have any sort of bearing on the playoffs? I think it will. I do think it will. I think that if these two teams match up in the playoffs, if they're healthy, if the Clippers are healthy, I'm going to favor them in a matchup 
with the Phoenix Suns if they meet down the line. But if they're not, and tonight's any indication, you're going to need some scoring if you're the Clippers to go ahead and beat a team like this because this balanced attack, if you check this out, off the bench, 15 points Cameron Payne, 13 points Frank Kamineski, uh, Torrey Craig chipped in 10 points. You're seeing these guys coming in. DeAndre Ayton had a very quiet night tonight with only five points, but he's able to get you 11 rebounds. Devin Booker also relatively quiet with only 21 points tonight. Michael Bridges chipped in 13. So you're seeing a lot of scoring from the Phoenix Suns. So if the Clippers are not all the way healthy and these two teams match up in the second round, which is where they would match up if all things continued out from here, with these two teams still being the second and third seed in the Western Conference, Suns looking to catch the Jazz, but the Jazz also won tonight. Um, Denver Nuggets still trying to hang around. The Joker had a huge night, and the Nuggets win too. So it's jumbled up here with these top four teams still jockeying for position. We're not going to know who is who until we get right into the playoff picture. And even then, with that play-in, let's look down here real quick at Team 7 through 10. You have the Blazers, Grizzlies, Spurs, and Warriors who are all um, still jockeying for position down here to set up that first-round matchup. And that's also very close. 10.5, uh, 10 and a half games here for Trailblazers back with uh, 13 games back for the Grizzlies and Spurs and only 13 and a half games back for the Warriors. This is a very tight race down here, and it's going to be interesting to see who gets those positions for the play in. But tonight's game definitely had playoff implications, definitely had a playoff atmosphere. The Phoenix Suns were able to get the win. It was a great game. Chris Paul, he really put out his MVP performance tonight. Um, is that going to be enough for him to get the MVP? No, I don't think it is. I don't think he's uh, the MVP of the league this season. I'd have to give that to somebody else. But tonight, he played some great basketball. I tipped my hat to him, and he led the way for the Phoenix Suns to break that 10-year streak of not making the playoffs. All right, well, thank you guys for tuning into this video, and keep coming back for more NBA content. I'll see you guys next time.